Okay, first up we have Lubbock Christian University. The Lady Shaps victorious tonight by a final score of 69 to 60. They have now advanced to the NCAA Women's Division II National Championship game. It'll be played Friday at 7 p.m. against Southwestern Oklahoma State. This will be the second appearance for the Lady Shaps, who also won the title back in 2016 with a perfect 35 and 0 record. With us for our uh, press conference, our head coach Steve Gomez, uh, Caitlin Cunyas, and Ali Schulte. Scott is in the yellow shirt. Uh, media, if you have a question, please raise your hand. He'll bring you the microphone, state your name and who you are with. You can ask anybody on the panel a question. Coach Gomez, congratulations. Uh, you can start with an opening comment. Yeah, what a war. Uh, what a, an absolutely tremendous team that we just played and survived against. Uh, they did, you know, you don't think you could have 29 turnovers in a game and even sniff winning against a team that's that good. Uh, fortunately, they didn't shoot it as well as normal, and uh, they turned it over some against our zone, which uh, was really good for us tonight. You know, we haven't played a lot of zone recently, and uh, so that was important for us to not have to chase them around because they can really move, and they just create so much havoc. Uh, so uh, we, we survived with some tough, tough girls. I mean, uh, we don't have a play a ton of players today. We played seven and eight maybe, and they just had to gut it out. And I appreciate their toughness, their intelligence, and their ability to stay steady through the chaos, because that team can make you really wilt and melt if, you, if you're not careful. Questions? Brandon Tripp, Arlen Conference. Coach, um, you touched on it just, just a second ago, but uh, points off of turnovers. You were only minus five in that department, and yesterday Drew was, I think, plus 30. Um, talk about how important it was to take care of the ball and when you did have turnovers uh, to not give away easy transition buckets. You know, you look at five of our turnovers were, I think, shot clock violations, and, and those, to me, uh, that's fine. I mean, we still could have taken some shots late that we passed, but, you know, they're not in action where they shoot layups. And so those, the dead ball turnovers to us weren't a win, but they weren't a big loss for us. And so uh, that was important. We did have some that led to points. But again, I think we got some at, at times that led to some points for us as well. So that wasn't the disparity that could make up the difference today. Uh, so again, thankful to these girls for making some good decisions. Chris, with a lot of Christian question for the girls, and I'll let both of you, both of y'all, answer this. Uh, how tough early on, a lot of air balls put up, and it seemed that that you're trying to slow the game down, but you couldn't slow the game down. You're just pressuring up shots when you had the the opportunity because of the fast paced game. How long did it take, if, if any point in the game, did it take to slow the game down and, and kind of control yourself? Oh, um, well, we knew it was going to be a fast-paced game, and we knew that they kind of relied on that press. So I think once we kind of got the feel of it and how they played, because we hadn't really been used to that, we could settle down and keep our heads because we knew we had to be more emotional. Um, yeah, I think along with what she said, we talk all the time about just being steady. And so I think for us, once um, there at the beginning, we were kind of forcing them up, forcing them up. Um, I think it was kind of once we were getting across that court, across that court, you know, just past that press, I think uh, we were finally able to just kind of settle in and uh, just kind of do what we do. Nova Southeastern's head coach said yesterday that they practiced with like seven defenders to work against this jury press before they saw it. Do you guys, I mean, you didn't have a whole lot of time. Did you try anything crazy in the last 24 hours? You know, that's a good question. We really didn't have time to do anything. We stood we stood and looked at each other and passed baked and caught passes. Is about all we could do because we needed every ounce of energy today to use for this game. I didn't want to have us running around and practice against pressure. They've seen pressure before. You know, our girls have seen it from other teams. Not to that level. That, that team... You know, Southwest Oklahoma is going to be very similar. They, they do some similar things, but maybe more on the half court even than, than Drew did. And so uh, they've seen it before this year. Uh, and they've seen some great individual ball defenders this year, too. And so, man, uh, Drew has a number of them that can just guard the ball and do it well without fouling. So some experience came in through the course of this year, but you can't replicate that. We, didn't, we would need a bunch of people because we're slow. <laughs> Coach, I find it interesting. You played with the lead for 35 minutes today, and you had the lead in the first quarter. How differently mentally, even if you're just down by two or four, is the game today if you're not playing from in front? Yeah, you know, I really thought if if, if we could avoid an early hole, it just 
just the mentality of that, of then feeling like you have to rush, if you're behind, then you have to rush against that press, that really makes it even tougher. And so that was a big part of it. And you know they're going to make a run, and that's just a team. That in the fourth quarter, you just got to keep grinding. And we had a few uh, hesitant possessions maybe, and they, they made some shots, credit to them. But I just appreciate our girls going from, cut it to four from ten, but we just were not going to let our, uh, our will was not going to be broken. He mentioned the uh, undefeated national championship a few years ago. Do you see any similarities at all between this team and 2016? Yeah, really very, very different team. Uh, you know, for us to play 2-3 zone tonight, that was reminiscent of that year because that's all we did, but we never got out of 2-3 zone. But this team has been uh, maybe in some ways a lot more versatile in what we have to do. Uh, that team was long and mobile, and they they made the game fairly simple. We didn't. This team has mentally really picked up a lot, and they really have to scout well and think. And so I appreciate the mentality of this team, uh, because we're obviously not just over-athleting anybody, but we've just got some smart kids, smart and selfish girls. Coach, uh, when the season started, Cunyus was out uh, due to injury. Maddie Turner was able to run point against Southern, Mes Southern Methodist University, University of New Mexico. How valuable was that time for her in a game like this? Because there was the, the door was open for a turning point when Schulte and, and Maddie picked up their fourth foul. And that's when Turner came in there and gave me some valuable uh, point time to assist things. So uh, just talk about her involvement and then summarize your, your guards and your point play. Yeah, I think part of the early season was probably we were seven and four at one point. A lot of it was Caitlin was out early in the year and then she came back and it took us a while to adjust to her being back in the lineup. Allie Schulte was tremendous start of the year. I mean, she was, and then when Caitlin came back, I think she took a step back, like, all right, I'll let Caitlin do a little more, and it took us a while to adjust, and now Allie has gotten back aggressive, and then Maddie Jo also, she, and she just has a knack about her. I mean, she doesn't look like much, and she gets out there and just makes plays, and you're right, early in the season it helped, and then in the middle of the year, she sort of had some not as many minutes, but lately she's been really key for us. And uh, yeah, that was huge to have you know Juliana, Kaylin, and Maddie Joe step in in the fourth quarter. Coach, a long time ago, you played Southwestern Oklahoma in the regular season. Uh, you want to reflect back on that 77-75 loss? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was a game similar to this, to where we turned the ball over a lot. We had a lead, and and but they're just a really good team. I told Coach Music back then. Before we played, I said, you have a team that can win a national championship. I mean, I knew the type of team they had. They're long, you know, they're sort of similar to a team we had in 2016. I told her that, not knowing that, hey, we're going to play her for one. But uh, to their credit, you know, they've got versatile players. Uh, and we knew that was a great, that was a great game for us. It was a learning game. It was a good challenge. Uh, and it was one that, you know, we had a chance to win. They, they made great plays and pressured us into some problems. And so uh, hopefully tonight can prepare us for Friday night. Or Thursday night. Friday. Friday night. Whatever night it is. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Kaylin and Allie, yesterday Olivia said that, like, heck yeah, we're looking our chops at looking at uh, Drury today. Obviously, you guys pulled it out. You backed that up. But how much were you talking about, you know, giving Drury their first loss in the last 24 hours? I mean, I feel like that's always the, the goal to give somebody their loss. But for us, like, them being 35 and whatever, I mean, it didn't really mean a ton to us because we just wanted to come in and go 1-0 and on that day, today. And so I don't know that we discussed their record or I guess necessarily all of that that goes behind that team because that's a great team and we were just kind of, like he said, we have to really prepare and um, think. And so for us it was more about what are we, how are we going to take away their weaknesses and we didn't necessarily dwell on a bunch of their records and all the hype behind that. Anything else? Okay, again, the national championship game Friday will be Lubbock Christian in southwestern Oklahoma, 7 p.m. Eastern, here at Alumni Hall, Friday night. Coach, ladies, congratulations. Thank you very much.